gently. Catherine. What of all people. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Of course. Oh, that's not like the old days. <laughs> well, no, no, it's not like the old days. I've been reading all about you, Andy. You're all over the newspapers. Leading educator visits the city. How'd you get to be a leading educator so suddenly? Uh, what's all this about you starting a new university? Aren't there enough colleges? I can't keep up with all the football games now. Well, I'm afraid this is going to be a different kind of college. We uh, may not even have a football team. Oh, sounds gruesome. How about buying me a drink? Well, of course. Uh, yeah, you're looking well, Catherine. Ravishing as ever. Watch your language, Professor. I'm feeling very susceptible. Imagine running into you. You know, I was thinking about you just today. I was thinking about you, too. That's why you ran into me. I uh, read you were staying at this hotel. Oh, nice strategy. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Yeah. Oh, uh, martinis. Very dry. It's still martinis, isn't it? Mm. Uh, for a starter, I do better as the night gets older. Make mine double. One single, one double. That's right. Say, uh, where's Charlie? Isn't he here anymore? Charlie? Yes, the bartender who used to take care of us. Before my time. Oh. Yeah. The old order changeth. I'm afraid we're just a couple of memories. You're kind of cute, Professor. You're different, but you're cute. Now, you know, this is the first time I ever saw you in civilian clothes. I think I liked you better in uniform. You were um, uh, shinier and uh, more accessible. You know, I used to feel rather embarrassed about those eagles. They seemed to me like a lot of nonsense. All I ever did was work out a few equations. Just the same, you were very handsome. Oh, easy now. Oh, you were? Uh, do you ever see Martha? All the time. No. Mm-hmm. She's having a party tonight. She'd be mad to see it. Oh, not me. No parties. I'm out here strictly on business. How oh, stuffy. When did you arrive? Yesterday. I flew out with a couple of colleagues of mine. We're, uh, we're meeting out here with a gentleman who's going to give us the money we need for our university. Uh, we hope. Did your wife come with you? Oh, she stayed in New York. Good. I like wives who stay in New York. Catherine, the war is over, remember? Is she pretty? Yes. Are you happy? Very. How dull. Andy? Yeah. Did you know her then? No. We met back east after I was discharged. She never saw me in uniform. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Colonel Gentling, Professor Gentling. You've led a double life. Well, I've led a double life, too. Double, triple, and quadruple. I am now Mrs. Catherine Sykes, if you please. Well, congratulations. Congratulations aren't in order. Oh, sorry. Skip it. Let's drink up. To the future. Oh, no, no, no. To the past. To the dear, delightful, wicked past. All right. That finishes the list for the faculty. Willoughby, Resnick, and Clark. Mr. Arnspiker should be quite pleased. I wouldn't be too hopeful, Andrew. I'm a little worried about Clark there. Well, what's the matter with him? Uh, he had the misfortune to get involved with one of his students. Blonde, plump, and willing. <laughs> Economics major, I believe. You see, Arnspiker has the theory that only the pure in heart are pure in mind. Oh, nonsense. But if either of you is contemplating anything scandalous between now and tomorrow morning, let me know. Oh, personally, I was planning to run away with a stripteaser from the burlesque by the name of La Verme La Rose. You know, she was timed scientifically at 63 convolutions a minute. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I have to call off the whole thing. She'll be terribly upset. I'm turning in now, gentlemen. My stamina is still working on Eastern time. 
I'm three hours behind myself. <laughs> I guess we've said everything. We might as well adjourn. It's up to Arn Spiger now. Well, one more day. I think I'll say a little prayer tonight. Say something nice about Arn Spiger. Oh, yes. Bless Mr. Arn Spiger, <laughs> if he comes across. <laughs> what, a call at this hour? Oh, there must be Helen calling from New York. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Good night. Oh, Helen? Helen, indeed. Who's this? Out of sight, out of mind. Did not make any impression on you. Oh, 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 Catherine. I thought you were my wife. Oh, wife. When you come into the party, Andy, we're all waiting for you. Oh, uh, Catherine, I told you. Oh, Andy, after all these years, you can't deny me one little party. Oh, Catherine, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, I, I, I tell you what. Uh, Maybe we can arrange to have dinner some night before I leave. Sounds horrible. If you don't come, Andy, I'm going to come over to the hotel and get you. I'll make a big scene in the hotel lobby and disgrace you forever. Remember what I did that time in Las Vegas? Now, look, Catherine, behave yourself. Are you coming, or must I come and get you? Be reasonable. I'm coming. No, no, no. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh. I tell you what, uh, I'll come over, but just for a few minutes. One drink and home, right? The address is 723 Arroyo Street. That's in Westwood. I'll have a drink waiting for you. And Andy, hurry. I remember, I... City, Rhinelander, 41598. I'll call you, Mr. Gently. Yes? Here's your party, Mr. Gently. Darling, did I wake you? No. I've been lying here hoping you'd call me. Oh. How's Fran? She's fine. She keeps asking for you. Yeah, you give her a big hug and a kiss for me. I miss you terribly, Andy. How are things going? Hey, Helen. Darling. I've got a brainstorm. Yes? Why don't you hop on a plane and come on out here? Andy, do you think I could? Uh, uh, call Tim. And tell him what I said for him to make arrangements for you. Tell him the same plane that I took. It, uh, it, you know, it makes only one stop. I'll tell him. I'm so excited, darling. Thank you for wanting me. Uh, I'll see you at the airport. Good night, dear. I can hardly wait. Hurry, Tony. any lights. It's a dark party. A secret party. Well, isn't there anybody else here? We're here. How many people do you need for a party? Oh, Catherine. Let's, let's be grown up and behave ourselves. What do you say? Hmm? The Colonel Professor is not the man he used to be. That's what I said. Come on in. Now, I think that I'd better go on back to the hotel. Oh, don't be gruesome. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a gruesome ex-gentleman, Fred. Come on in. Well, I, uh... Oh. Well, where's the party? Here it is. Welcome to the party. <laughs> so there's no one here. I'm here. You're not completely deserted. Martha, 
I am glad to see you. Hello, Andrew. Ooh, this party's dying. The next ten minutes are crucial. I'll get some drinks. You, you entertain the guests, Martha. Tell them the story of my life. Then I'll give them a laugh. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, Catherine's had a standard evening. A fight with her husband. Refused to go home. He left. And I'm conducting the mopping up operations. Say, she's changed, hasn't she? Yes, she has. You haven't changed, Martha. Haven't I? Not at all. What a shame. You look the same. A little more serious, perhaps. You've been doing wonderful things, Andy. I've followed your career like a bloodhound. What's all this about a new university? Break it up, Martha. The well-known educator's my territory. Here, have a drink. It's getting gloomy out. And you might as well stop chasing the professor. It's a waste of time. The male sex has become cautious. It used to be different in the old days. It was a war. Changed everybody, changed everything. It was a state of emergency. I'm the only one left in the whole world who's still in the state of emergency. I think I'll go to bed. I've got a new rule about getting some sleep one night a week. This seems as good a night as any. Oh, why do people give parties anyway? Nice seeing you, Andrew. I'll be looking for you in the papers. Wear your best cap and gown. Thanks, Martha. Let's you and me go someplace and have a good time. We'll pretend the war is still on, huh? Just you and me. You and I will do no such thing. Oh, don't be a school teacher. Come on, before I change my mind. Look, Catherine, there's one thing you've got to get straight. What? The war is over. Oh, not for me it isn't. In my whole life, I was in love with two men. I didn't get either one of them. Watch out, watch out. Ah, you don't want an accident, do you? I don't care. Either one of them. You. You were sweet and gentle. And I thought you liked me. And then you went away and you got yourself married. Now there's Freddy. Freddy's nice. But he's a hermit. He keeps himself locked up in his house and he never goes anywhere. Intelligent fellow. The only one I'm not in love with is my husband. He's not a nice man. I'm cold. You still use the same lotion. Uh -huh. I always liked it. Where are we going? You're going home. Is it? I don't want to go in the house. Ah, uh, let's say goodnight and you go on in like a good girl. Hmm? I don't want to. I want to stay here and talk to my ex-gentleman friend who got married when my back was turned. Oh, look, Catherine. We've had a nice little visit. And uh, I'll see you again sometime soon. Some, uh, some afternoon for lunch, let's say. Hmm? I don't want to go in the house. I want to stay here and talk to you. Kiss me, Colonel. Keep quiet down there. What's the matter with you? Now, sit up. Sit up. Sorry, Catherine. Are you hurt? Only fatally. 
Here, let me look at it. Let me see it. Nice, soft, silky scarf. It's Andrew's scarf. Well, it's nothing serious. But you better get into the house right away and put a bandage on it. I don't want to go in the house. Now, Catherine, listen to me. You've got to go home. This has all been a mistake. I never should have come over when you called me. I don't want to go home. I want to stay here with you. People are always making me do what I don't want to do. Well, I'll have to do it the hard way. What are you going to do? I'm leaving you here. No. Andy! Andy, please don't go! Please don't leave me here, Andy, please! Willoughby on social history, Professor George Resnick on political history, and Professor Clarence L. Clark on economics. And that about concludes our present faculty list. Did you say Clark? Clarence L. Clark? Yes, one of the most brilliant men in his field. And that man we were talking about? Why, I... Can't use him. He's got a bad record. His scholastic record, Mr. Arnspeiger, is above reproach. Now, A.K., uh, perhaps we could talk this over a little later. We'll uh, talk it over now. The man's involved in a scandal. Finish. I don't like scandal of any kind. High thinking, clean living, keep your name out of the newspapers. That's my motto. Clark goes. And anybody else goes who can't live up to decent standards of conduct. Well, it doesn't seem fair to me. Just one mistake. It may not have been his fault. <laughs> I am not interested in being fair, and I don't care whose fault it was. I am interested in trying to start a new type of school on your blueprint. Andy. On your blueprint, Mr. Gently. Oh, yes. I never went to college myself. Country clubs with libraries attached. As much the fault of the colleges as anything else. But the world is going to the dogs in a caboose these days. Get out of here. Now, A.K. Get out of here. Gentlemen, please. You expect me to hand over $2 million to you. If you're not interested enough in what I have to say to listen to me, then I don't want you. I'm very sorry, Mr. Arnsbeiger. I, I beg your pardon. I, I'm not quite myself today. If you'll excuse me, please. Martha, I've been trying to reach you all afternoon. I have to see you. It's no use. I'm going to the police and get it over with. No, please, please don't do anything until you see me. Pick me up on Cannon Drive and Clifton. Do you know where that is? Martha, I can't hide. I... Don't be an idiot. I'll be waiting for you. It. Catherine's purse. She must have dropped it there. It's a good thing we found it first. 
What happened, Andrew? Where did you leave her? Well, the last I saw of her, she was dragging my scarf along the sidewalk on the way to her house, so help me. Then it is your scarf. Do you think they can trace it to you? Probably. I must have had a label. I don't know. Now I have to work quickly. What? Find out what happened to her before the police do. It's your only chance. Oh, but Martha... You must. All there is to connect you with it right now is the scarf and the diary. What diary? What's this about a diary? A nice, juicy account of everything she did and everything she thought. Your name is all over it. Where's the nearest police station? Not so fast. I don't think anybody will find it for a while yet. She kept it pretty well hidden. Where? In the pocket of an old red polo coat hanging in a bedroom closet. What else was in the diary? Other names, other people she knew, other men. Did she say anything to you about anybody else? Yes, Freddie, a man called Freddie. Hmm? Yeah, let's see your license. Let you park in front of Red Curbs in New York, bud? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, has that been red all this time? <laughs> okay, I'll let you go this time because you're an out-of-towner. But watch yourself. Right. What is this strange talent I have for getting into trouble? Red curbstone. Look out! Not my day. Not my day at all. By the way, is this a rented car? Yes, it's a drive yourself. You better turn it in today and exchange it for another, just in case they got a description of it. That's right. See, who is this Freddy? Freddie Blair. He and Arnold Sykes are mixed up in some sort of shady business. They're as thick as thieves. And I mean thieves. But she said she was in love with him. How does Mrs. Sykes feel about that? Say, maybe we're onto something. A jealous husband. Not Arnold. He's just this side of a weasel. He's known about Catherine and Freddie for some time, and it hasn't seemed to make much difference. It's better and better. How'd I ever get into this anyway? I was just minding my own business. If only we could lay our hands on that diary before the police get to it. Hmm. Wait a minute. Catherine's keys. One of them must be the house key. Here it is. I'll have Arnold meet me somewhere, and you'll have the house all to yourself. What do you... Oh, no, Martha, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Find a body? Still looking. What makes you so sure there is a body? There's always a body. Anything new? Yeah. The neighbor next door said she heard a man and a woman arguing outside a window last night. Yeah? And another lady down the block said she heard a scream. That's and still another lady says she was accosted by a stranger who made improper advances as she was driving into her garage, causing her to bend a fender. She describes him as looking like Frankenstein. Do we arrest Frankenstein? Just the same, I think we got a body on our hands. Yeah, nice looking body, too. Anything new on her husband? 
Ryan's been tailing them all day. Oh, made a phone call this afternoon. Who to? It's Bookie. Oh. He bet 50 bucks on Little Goose Girl in the 8th at Santa Anita. On the nose. Mr. Sykes doesn't seem to be disturbed about losing the wife, does he? Think he did it? Maybe. What about the scarf? Got a New York label with we'll check and we'll know more about by tomorrow. Good, that'll help. Hey, tell Ryan to phone me if Sykes goes out tonight. Why? I want to give that house a little look-see when Sykes ain't there. He'll be back here by 7 o'clock. We go together. You don't trust Sykes, do you? I've been a detective for 23 years. I don't trust my own mother. Well, you know your own family. Uh, uh, Sykes has got some phony connections. Racetracks, big-time gambling, no visible means of support. Yes, sir, we keep our eye on Mr. Sykes. What about the guy who brought her home last night? You know, the uh, mystery man. We keep looking for him, too. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. What? Find a body. Sure, sure. Tell me you got the wrong key. Keep your shirt on. Well, it's one of these. I got it from the landlord today. See? You gotta have faith. It's a dangerous looking animal. I don't think he cares for us. Tell him that man is dog's best friend. He, he. Man is dog's best friend. Not convinced. Well, let him alone. Take a look around. Who's bothering him? Wish we could find a body. It's not asking too much, is it? One little body? I like these cases where you don't have no body. We can give you a real solid foundation to go on. We'll know the name of the man that bought the scar by tomorrow. Maybe that'll clear the whole thing up. Hey, here's something. What is it? Can of tomato soup, can of green peas, one can of pork and beans, can of peaches. Shopping list. That reminds me, my wife told me to bring home some ginger ale. Don't let me forget it. Hey, maybe this is a code. Yeah, the secret of how to make a bad dinner. Yeah. Take a look in that closet. Get that. Sykes residence? All right. Pet channel. Yeah. All right, I'll tell him. Hey, boss. Ryan. He says Sykes and the weird girl are getting ready to leave that bar. They're just around the corner. He thinks we'd better get out of here. Okay. He wants to know, do you want him to switch to the girl? No, 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 no. I may put somebody on her tomorrow. Tell him to stick with Sykes. Okay. Hey, Ryan, stick with him. All right. See you later. Come on, come on, let's go. Hey, boss, come on. Stop making like a bloodhound, will you? You don't want to be here when Sykes gets back? Yeah, I guess you're right. What makes you so sure it's Sykes? Because it's so simple. I'm a simple man, I like simple solutions. I got nervous headaches when things get complicated. And besides, he gave me a bum tip. Little goose girl. Yeah, we haven't looked in the bar yet. Hey, hey, that dog will tear us to pieces. Nice doggy. <laughs> The whole case is giving me the willies. Even the dogs act screwy. Bourbon, bonded. Yeah, come on, come on. Mm-hmm. 
made in Kentucky. Yeah, let's go. Hey, maybe you better get the dog back and lock him up. You trying to get me killed? <laughs> Come on. talking. Freddy was here. Wrecked my place and beat up my dog. I'll have to report it to the police. The cops are on my tail, but good. Just let me catch up with him, that's all. I'll keep in touch with you. Operator. Connect me with the police. Did you get it? Andrew. Don't worry. It's my own blood. What happened? Well, it seems there was a dog. Oh, no. I forgot about him. I should have warned you. It's all right. I won by a knockout. Bandage, iodine. I stopped on the way. Here, let me help you. Careful. Come on, let's wash it out. I hope it was worth the trouble. Don't worry. Wait until you've read a couple of entries. Oh, he really got you, didn't he? <laughs> I don't think they've been feeding him lately. January 23rd, woke up early this morning, had a dream about Andrew Gentling. You know, there ought to be a law against women keeping diaries. 
I told you it would be worth it. Now, this is going to hurt. At this point, nothing can hurt. Oh! Uh, that <laughs> should do it. Incidentally, I got a slight lead from Arnold Sykes. He was questioning me about Freddie. Seemed to be more concerned about Freddie than about Catherine. I gathered that Freddie had disappeared, and Arnold would like very much to know where. Think it means anything? Could be. By the way, we can't see each other again. Why not? The police are after you, too. I forgot to mention that I had to hide in that closet while two detectives ransacked the place. I heard them say they'd start trailing you tomorrow. Don't you think you better bow out of this? Hold your hand still. Well, don't you? You get into a lot of trouble helping me. A lot of help I've been so far. No, I don't think I'd better bow out. Oh, here's an item. Freddie got into a fight over me tonight at the Silver Club. At the bar, Johnny Marino came over drunk and started to bother me. When Freddie pulled his hand out of his pocket, he had a glove on. And when Johnny wasn't looking, he hit him. There must have been something else in the glove besides his hand, because Johnny took an awful beating. Freddie hit him in the face again and again. <laughs> nice boy, Freddie. Carries a loaded glove. How did Catherine ever get mixed up with such people? Oh, here's something else. Freddie called today from SF. San Francisco? Probably. And here's the number, Klondike 26714. Must be San Francisco. Wait a minute. Huh? Hello, operator. Would you place a call to San Francisco, please? Uh, the number is Klondike 26714. Yes. Thank you. What can we lose? You can't just ask him point blank about her. If there's anything to it, you'd be tipping him off. Yes? Here's your party. Hello. Hello, is this you, Freddy? Who's this? Oh, this is Martha Weir, Freddy. I... Got the wrong number. There's no Freddy here. Oh, but I was calling to... Got the wrong number, I said. That was Freddy, all right. Well, what do you think? I think that Freddy knows what happened to Catherine. And I think Arnold Sykes would like to know what happened to Freddy. That's what I think. And the police would like to know what happened to me. You know, Freddy, hmm. I think I had better have a little talk with Freddy, don't you? Over the phone? No, personally, in San Francisco. Oh, no. It's the only practical thing left to do. If I started now, I could be there by morning. Alone? Of course. <laughs> I can't very well ask for a police escort. But he's dangerous, Andrew. You don't know about men like him. He, he's a gangster, a gunman. Martha, we might as well face it. I'm in this thing, and I can't very well get out of it unless I see it through. The truth of the matter is, I should have given myself up this morning. Take this long to open the door? Who have you got in here with you, a woman? Oh, no, no, no women, please. We have got enough trouble with Mr. Arnspiger now. I'm sorry, I, uh, I was on the phone. Where have you been all afternoon and evening? We've called you at least a dozen times. What are you doing, operating another business on the side? <laughs> no, I went off for a little ride. After that session with his nibs. Oh, don't uh, remind me. Whatever got into you anyway? You couldn't have been more damaging if you had been deliberate. Yes, I know. It was pretty awful, wasn't it? Oh, uh, 
Morris. <laughs> I wonder if you'd mind leaving these closed. I, I, I think I'm coming down with a cold. Ah, oh, that's why. <laughs> you don't get enough fresh air. <laughs> what happened to your hand? Hmm? Oh, oh, I cut it, but broke a glass. What is that? You're, you're packing. Are you going somewhere? Yes, I am. But you can't do that. Not tonight, Andrew. Yeah, tonight. Andrew, are you in trouble? Can't we help you? No, Morris, I don't think so. Thanks just the same. I've got to go to San Francisco. San Francisco? Well, this is the end. And it's most important that I go tonight. I... I'd like to tell you what this is all about, but... I can't. At least not now. Uh, you see, uh, Andrew, the thing is like this. Uh, Henry and I, we spent the whole afternoon and the evening with Mr. Arnspeiger. We talked him into giving us another chance. Yes. We told him that perhaps a room wasn't exactly the right place. Morris, what are you driving at? We've arranged for you to give a lecture. Yes. A lecture? Yes, at the college, tomorrow night. But uh, I may not be back by tomorrow night. So what's the matter with San Francisco? Hmm? San Francisco will do just as well as, as Los Angeles. We can have the lecture up at Berkeley. And I have a very good friend there, Dr. Markheim. Uh, he can arrange everything. I'll call him up tonight. How about Arnspiker? Maybe he won't come. He'll come if I have to drag him by the heels. Uh, Morris, get on the phone and make some reservations oh, yes, at the St. Yes. Francis Hotel. And Andrew, I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe all this has turned out for the best after all. Give him a good lecture, my boy. We can't miss. <laughs> Everything will work out all right, Andrew. Don't worry. Uh, Good night. I, I won't. Good night, Morris. Are you all right? A <laughs> slight case of frostbite, that's all. I'm so sorry, but I couldn't get rid of them. You sure you ought to do this, Andy? I'll be a dead duck anyway. When they find out who bought that scarf, I might as well die trying. Nothing I can say. No, I'll just pack a few things and be off. All right, then. I'll run along. We better not be seen leaving the hotel together. Take care of yourself. Let me know the minute you find out anything. I will. Martha. Thanks. In fact, thanks for everything. That's it. Jim. Captain, you're a jinx. Why don't you go home and go to bed? Nobody's committing any crimes tonight. It's illegal. Boys, I got a little present for you. Something nice and fresh in the Catherine Sykes case. You find the man who bit the dog? Well, not exactly, but I think he'll show up pretty soon. Oh, this is a report from the vet. A dog had rabies. Hydrophobia. We destroyed them a half hour ago. You must be running away from something. What'd you do, rob a bank? <laughs> Just uh, fill it up, please. Oh, uh... Oh, just pay the girl inside. It's okay. And now for the early morning news. First, the weather report. Folks. The weatherman promises more rain for this weekend and approaching storms Howdy. heading down from Alaska. What'd it be? Some coffee. One coffee. More local news. In Los Angeles, a weird twist was given to the Catherine Sykes case last night. 
The home of the pretty housewife, who has been missing for two days now, was broken into early yesterday evening. The intruder, according to police, was driven off by the Sykes police dog, who was found unconscious with blood on his jaws by Arnold Sykes, husband of the missing woman. The intruder escaped, but not completely. In a routine examination of the animal, the police department made a startling discovery. The dog was suffering from the most dreaded of all diseases, rabies, hydrophobia. If the bitten man is not treated immediately, he is doomed. All doctors in the Southern California area have been requested by Los Angeles police to report immediately any case of dog bite that should... Ah, shut up. I want to hear some music. Now we're cooking. Officer's hours, 10 to 1. What do you want? Uh, Dr. Thatcher. I'm Dr. Thatcher. What's the trouble? Uh, doctor, I've been bitten by a dog. I'm afraid he had rabies. Come in. This way. Sit down. John Simmons. Where are you from? Uh, Cleveland. Cleveland. Uh, uh, doctor, uh, couldn't you take my history later? I, I, I'm in need of attention. Easy now. Just hold on. The important thing in matters like this is to keep your head. More folks die of the fear of rabies than the disease itself. You don't see my glasses around anywhere, do you? You're wearing them. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> well, now, when were you bit? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago, not so good. Where did this happen? Oh, uh, what difference does that make? Listen, either you want me to treat you or you don't. You're in my office, and I have a certain system. A doctor without a system isn't worth the paper his diploma is written on. I've been practicing 45 years. I do things in a certain way. I put everything on paper. Now then, where did it happen? Uh, Santa Barbara. And, uh, well, uh, what kind of dog? <laughs> doctor, how I know it was a large brown dog. <laughs> you want his pedigree too? Don't shout at me. I didn't bite you. Let me see the wound. Did you report the accident? Well, no, why should I have done that? Because it's the law, Mr. Simmons. It's the law. Every case of dog bite has to be reported and investigated. Well, I, I was in a hurry. Hurry, hurry. Everybody's in a hurry to get to the cemetery before his neighbor. Look, Doctor, I didn't come here for a lecture. I've been bitten by a mad dog. Now, I know that there are some injections that may save me, and I want you to start them immediately. Everything in due course. First, I'm going to put on some clothes. Then we'll go down to the county hospital. We'll make some tests. And we'll call Santa Barbara and see if the police there can't round up that big brown dog. 
Might save you a lot of trouble if they found him and he turned out to be healthy after all. Uh, uh, he had rabies, I'm sure. Of course you're sure. Still, we'll investigate anyway. I haven't time, Doctor. I have an important appointment in San Francisco. Sit down, Mr. Simmons. Nature don't know about appointments. Your bloodstream don't know anything about your business in San Francisco. Disease is very democratic, Mr. Simmons. It kills the patient and the impatient. Except it kills the impatient a little faster. Yes, eh? Yeah, on my 10th birthday. My name's Horace. What's yours? What? Your name. What's your name? Oh, uh, uh, John. I have three uncles named John. We're going to Oregon. My Aunt Bertha lives in Oregon. She has a big house. We're poor. My father says if Aunt Bertha doesn't invite us to live with her, he's going to split her head open with a baseball bat. But I'll bet you he'll put me to bed before he does it. Any time something happens, they make me go to sleep. What's the matter with your hand? Huh? Oh, uh, uh I cut it. Yeah, uh, Horace, I think your mother wants you. Nah, she yells when she wants me. I know what the police are looking for. I heard it over their radio before. Yeah? What are they looking for? If you give me a dime, I'll tell you. There you are. Is it a real dime? Sure. Now, uh... What could what? I buy with a dime? Could I buy a catcher's mitt? No. Could I buy a rifle? Well, no, not quite. Uh, what is it the police are looking for? For the guy who got bit by the dog. Get going, Jack. The kid just spotted the guy we're looking for in the back of that truck. We may need room. Right. Klondike 26714. Just one minute, please. <sighs> yeah? Hello. Freddy? Who's this? Uh, 
You don't know me, Freddy, but I know you. We have mutual friends. I've got to talk with you. It's very important to both of us. We'll talk. Not over the telephone. I've got to see you personally. The boys send you? The who? All right, all right. Play it down if you want to. I got nothing to hide. I'm willing to talk. Will it be? I could come to your place. You don't know how to get to my place. You could tell me. Wise guy. All right, you say where. Corner of Camino and Viaduct. Know where that is? I can find it. Camino and Viaduct. What time? 11 o'clock tonight. 11 tonight? What's the matter? Are you afraid of the dark? Uh, I was hoping you could make it sooner. It's dead or nothing. You can come alone. I'll be alone. And don't try any funny business either. I'm not playing for pennies these days. Nor am I. Be seeing you. Operator, I wonder if you could get me the address of this phone number, Klondike 26714. I seem to have misplaced it. One moment, please. I'm sorry, sir, but that is a private number. Information will not give us the address. Thank you. This is Dr. Markheim. Morris Abram. Yes, I'm downstairs in the lobby. May I come up? 824. Thank you. Come in, Doctor. How are you, Professor? I won't take up too much of your time. I just dropped in to welcome you for the committee and see if there's anything you want. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, sit down, won't you? Thank you. Can I, uh... Order you anything? No, thanks. I just dropped in for a minute. What's the matter with your hand? Oh, I uh, cut it. How? On a glass. Want me to have a look at it, see if it's uh, all right? Oh, thanks. It's, it's, it's perfectly all right. Uh, the lecture is scheduled for 8.30. And my wife sent me out with instructions to bring you back dead or alive for dinner. <laughs> Wants to lionize you a little for the local society. You know how women are. <laughs> well, that's that's... Very good of Mrs. Markheim, and I'd be very happy to come, but uh, I am a little tired. Thought I'd use the time to sort of collect my thoughts for the lecture. Sure, sure. I know what you mean. Whenever I have to make a speech, I can't stand anything on my stomach. It goes up and down like a pogo stick. <laughs> <laughs> Till 8.30, then. You'll be on time, won't you? On the dot. Allow yourself a good three quarters of an hour to get there. You're sure there's nothing I can do for you? No. I'm a very influential man in this town. Get you anything you want, any time you want it. <laughs> Whipped up the arrangements for this lecture practically right out of my hat. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry to have put you to all that trouble. No trouble. I was happy to do it. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, Professor. I look forward to tonight. So do I. Yeah. Oh, I say, Doctor. You know, there is something that you might be able to do for me. Uh, I've been trying to locate a friend of mine up here. I have his telephone number, but uh, the operator won't give me his address. She says it's a private number. Oh, one of those, eh? Well, um, why don't you call him and ask him? <laughs> I bet you never thought of that. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's it's uh, it, it's this way, Doctor. It's a it's a sort of joke, and uh, I thought I'd like to uh, drive over and surprise him. Uh, we were together in the army. Uh, uh, Mrs. Markheim told me to give you anything you asked for, so uh, let's have a try at it. Just watch me and see how a man of action works. <laughs> Operator, put me through the police headquarters. I want to talk to Lieutenant Ed Fogarty. Emergency. <laughs> no trouble at all to take a gander at that hand of yours, see if it's clean. Oh, thanks. It's, uh, it's quite all right. Here's your party. Hello, Ed. It's Mark I'm talking. Ben. Did you take those pills I gave you? <laughs> now I want to ask you a favor. I want the address of this telephone number. Uh, Klondike 26714. Klondike 26714. A patient of mine. 
I don't want to disturb him, and they won't give me any information. I'm at the St. Francis. Extension 824. Fine. Nothing to it. He's going to call me back. <laughs> I better not tell Ed about that bandage you're wearing. <laughs> Everybody's bandage conscious today. That fellow down in L.A. with a dog bite. <laughs> you read about it? Oh, uh, uh, yes, a little. <laughs> Say, you could be that man they're looking for. You came from L.A. today, and you're wearing a bandage on your hand. <laughs> Maybe I better just be a good citizen and turn you over to Ed. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? <laughs> Very funny. Well, my phone's rung 20 times today, asking what the symptoms of rabies are. I haven't seen a case of hydrophobia since I was in medical school. I had to read up on it all morning so I wouldn't act like a darn fool over the phone. <laughs> Beautiful disease. Filterable virus, they think, <laughs> attacks the central nervous system. The first thing that happens, the patient gets a vague sense of apprehension. Just a general low-down feeling that something bad is going to happen. Then a dull pain around the wound. Pretty soon he has trouble swallowing. Then his voice gets husky. Weird, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? <coughs> Then he gets thirsty, wants a drink of water in the worst way, and this is the funny part of it. He's afraid of the water. Can't stand the sight of it. Just the thought of it produces a spasm in the throat. Very painful. Then paralysis. And when the symptoms display themselves, finny. No cure ever. 100% mortality. Fascinating. Yes, isn't it? That must be Ed. I'll pick it. Hello. Ed? Yes. Um, oh, um, 1202 Lomitas? Thanks a million, Ed. I'll send you over a bottle of those pills free. <laughs> there you are. Oh, say, that's fine, fine. I'm, uh, I'm very grateful to you, Doctor. Not at all. Don't mention it. <laughs> uh, sure you don't want me to have a look at that hand? Oh, no, no, no. It, it's perfectly all right. Okay. Well, keep away from strange dogs. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> right. <laughs>
need any help? Yeah. Give me a lift into town. Get in. Doctor. So do I. Just drop me off in town. Wasn't that Freddie Blair's house you came out of? What do you know about Freddie Blair? What were you doing there anyway? Well, I... Are you a cop? No, I'm not the police. It's not important who I am for the moment. What's important is that I know who you are, Mr. Sykes. Say, how do you know my name? You one of the guys from the East? Yes, I'm from the East. Look, I had nothing to do with it. It's all Freddie. I didn't see a nickel of that money. He held out on me, too. Let me out of here. Stop the car. Now, wait a minute. Uh, let me out of here. Look out. Look out, you fool. Mr. Andrew Gentling, please. Hello. Is Mr. Gentling there? Oh. Well, I'm Martha Weir, Mrs. Gentling, a friend of your husband's. I'm downstairs. May I come up? It's very urgent. Thank you. There's no time to be polite, Mrs. Gentling. We've got to find Andrew at once. Have you any idea where he is? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen him. I only just arrived. He left word in Los Angeles for me to meet him here. Has something happened? Is there anything wrong? Well, you'd better prepare yourself for something of a shock. Andrew is in great trouble. He... Here. Read this. But I don't see what... It's Andrew. He's the man they're looking for. That's absurd. You must be mistaken. Oh, believe me, there's no mistake, Mrs. Gentling. I know it sounds like I'm not making any sense, but there is no mistake, and every second counts. I've got a doctor to help him, a friend of mine. We've got to get Andrew to Los Angeles at once. But it's quite impossible, don't you see? You must be confusing him with someone else. My husband is Professor Andrew Gentling. He's going to lecture here tonight. I just spoke to Dr. Markheim about him. He arranged the lecture. He said that he'd been talking to Andrew just a few... He said that... Uh, that Andy had cut his hand and was wearing a bandage. He was bitten by that dog. Catherine was a friend of his. He took her home from my house. Never mind the details. You can tell me about it on the way over to the lecture hall. He's due there in three quarters of an hour. He won't have time to stop here. He'll probably go directly there. I haven't heard from him. Not a word. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Gentling seems to have been delayed for a few moments, but I'm sure he'll be along very shortly. In the meantime, Professor Herbert Watson, who is well known to all of you, has kindly consented to speak on a subject that is of great importance to all of us. Soil balance. Professor... <laughs> Professor Watson.
soil balance. Dramatic words. Look, I just don't like it. I don't like... Shh, quiet. It's difficult to speak them calmly and with scientific detachment. Deep in the soil, down where the earthworm delves, all our fates are being decided. Before man came... There she is, sitting next to Mrs. Gently. I see him. By giving back I don't to get it. it. I think we're up a blind alley. And we follow all the way to San Francisco and we wind up in school. I think she's just our nuts for education, that's all. Cousins. Keep your shirt on, will you? She talked to that doctor in Los Angeles about a guy with a rabies. Keep your shirt on. The horse. And the hair. Consider the earthworm. by giving back to it more than it took out. <laughs> then disaster. The plow, the irrigation ditch, the tractor, the bag of chemical fertilizer. The earthworm. The earthworm. Professor Gentling is here. Gentling. I thank you for listening. If any of you wish to hear the conclusion of my remarks, I shall be most happy to continue them later on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to introduce Professor Andrew Gentling. Well, I must beg your indulgence for being late, but I was unavoidably detained. One of the great ideals of the classic world was the sane mind in the sound body. Now, by extension, that meant the well-rounded man, the man who at the same time could be a soldier and defend the state by force of arms, and who could be a poet and philosopher and increase the well-being and understanding of the state by force of intellect. In ancient Greece and Rome, it was not unusual for a man to be a farmer and a scholar, a merchant and a statesman, a general and a historian. Under their guidance, the new university will help form citizens who will be free, intelligent, informed, and just. I thank you. Very, very well done, Harry. Really, Professor. I do wish you'd said a little something about soil balance. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Andy. I couldn't done better myself. <laughs> well, young fellow, supposing you and I go back to the hotel and have a little talk. Mr. Arnspiker, I'm sorry, but I have a very important appointment. <laughs> but, 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 but... He can't do this to me. Professor Gentling. Yes? I'm Captain Gledhill, Los Angeles Police Department. Homicide. Oh, yes? Uh, I listened to your speech tonight with a great deal of interest. I was really impressed. You see, I'm a kind of a semi-professional theoretician, in my own field, of course. Crime. I see. Matter of fact, I'm in town right now in a little business of crime. Oh? Yeah. Well, what I wanted to ask you was this. Do you ever stop to consider it might be a good idea to have a Department of Crime in that new university of yours? Oh, well, yes, that's a, that's, that's a good idea. That's a very excellent idea. Uh, I'll try to include such a department on our plans. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Accident? 
Oh, uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing very serious. Uh, just a little cut. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I have a rather important engagement. Oh, sure, sure. Sure, uh, I'll be seeing you, Professor. Huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Call me if you need any help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Hey, boss, just got news from New York. They found out who bought that scarf. Oh. Hold on to your hat, boss. Professor Andrew Gentling. Oh, my aching head. Pick up the way, girl. Mrs. Gentling with him. Get to a phone. Call headquarters. Tell them to put out a line for a green sedan. Rent it. Drive yourself. Bashed in right front fender. One light. Professor Andrew Gentling driving. Tall, dark, handsome, mustache. Come on, I'll give you five minutes. Meet me at the police station. Okay. And bring some aspirin. <laughs> I saw that car heading down Camino Street toward the freight yards. I'm over here. Side off the street. I don't know you, but I know who sent you. I knew they'd be after me. Well, just in case you're thinking of trying anything fast, let me tell you that if I'm hurt, they won't see a penny of the money. I tried to give them a fair shake. I tried to deliver. A lot of the money I spent just the way I said I would. It's not my fault if people double cross me. Listen, if they send anybody else with you, no, I'm alone. You're alone, all right. I've been hanging around here since 9 o'clock. I know you're alone. Listen, pal, we can do business. There's still plenty of that dough left. Plenty. Now, why don't you go back and tell them you couldn't find me? I'm leaving tomorrow anyway, out of the country. Won't be much of a lie. I'll give you 10, what do you say? Ten? Ten grand. No questions asked. Let's see. I'll make a better bargain with you. Yeah, what? Just tell me what happened to Catherine Sykes. Who wants to know? I do. Freddie Blair. Why is Freddie Blair?
you come from? How'd you get in here? Never mind the details. I had a fight with your... with Freddy. The police came. You had a fight with Freddy? Where is he? He's dead, Gavin. There were two trains. He ran across the tracks. He's dead? Oh. We're going away tonight on a boat. Panama. What's a laugh? I'm taking it back with me, Calvin. No, you're not. I don't want to go back. Nobody can make me go anywhere. Now, why don't you be sensible and come along with me? I, I, I won't go. Arnold will kill me if he ever gets his hands on me again. He will! You want to see me killed? I, I, I won't. I won't go. You, you can't make me go. Everybody makes me do things I don't want to do. I won't go. I won't. What are you doing? Who do you think you're calling? The police. Oh, no, Andy. I don't want to get mixed up with them. Put the phone down, please, Andy. Well. All right. I'll go with you. Just don't call the police. I'll get even with you, though, Andy. You'll see. Sykes slightly damaged, won't talk yet. Where is he now? Cell 17, second tier vacancy. Anything new? Yes, I've decided to apply for my pension. Police Department, Pacciano. He's right here now. Yeah? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. He spotted the car outside of Hayward. He's got a girl with him. They're heading south toward the coast highway. Hayward, that's right there. That gives him a good half hour start. Oh, but you can head him off by going this way. It's about 10 miles short. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> Andrew? Good. I, I, I don't want to sound callous, but what happened to Freddie, I don't feel too badly about that. I, I'm not going to lie and pretend that I'm heartbroken, because I'm not. He, he was no good. That night when I left you, he was waiting for me in my hallway. He beat me up. I broke a date with him earlier in the day. We were supposed to go away together. He beat me up, and I passed out. And when I woke up, I was on my way to San Francisco with him. The silly maid shouldn't have reported it to the police. No, Arnold, he knew I wasn't dead. He, he was just trying to make trouble for us. Freddie owed him part of the money. Andy, there, there's something I want to tell you. The money, all, all the money that Freddie was holding out. I know where it's hidden, Andy. It, it's almost $100,000. money Freddie was collecting for a syndicate. They, they book races all over the country. He was holding out on the collection so we could go away. I'll give it to you, Andy. We can go away together, you and me. You can do whatever you want to. No, Captain. Why? Why not? It just can't be. You know better. I don't want to know better. I want the money. I want to go away. Please, please, Andy.
All right. I'll show you. I'll show everybody. I won't go back to Arnold Sykes. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> Get away from her. This is it, Andy. I told you I'd get even with you. It's all or nothing with me. If you leave her, I jump. No, 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 no. You wouldn't. Won't I take another step and see? Well, go on! All right. I'll go. Leave the keys to the car and start walking. Well, go on! What are you waiting for? Hey, uh, boss. Told you I'd find a body. Well, what's the matter, Miss Fuzzy? What's the hurry? Hydrophobia, the dog. I've got to get to a doctor. Oh, oh that. Oh, forget it. That dog didn't have hydrophobia. What? <laughs> oh. No, I made all that up. Pretty good story, huh? Smart. Psychology. Hey, boss. You'll know, excuse me, will you? And don't worry about the dog. He's fine. He's home playing with my kids right now. Nice pup. Mr. Arn Spiker, whose generosity and understanding have made this great project possible, and those courageous men who have joined with me in this gallant undertaking. Dr. Horace Willoughby, Professor George Resnick, Professor Morris Abram, Dr. Henry Pritchard, and Professor Clarence L. Clark. It is my great honor and privilege to dedicate this project with the laying of this cornerstone.